Friends in Christ, today we celebrate one of the greatest mysteries of our Christian faith, the Holy Trinity. This celebration reminds us that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are working together. They are never separated. Though each one of them is a distinct divine person, there is a unity of excellence and relation within the three divine persons. And it is called a mystery. And what is a mystery? Mystery is something that goes beyond our own understanding or comprehension. And we're also made to understand that reason stops where faith begins. And there are many things in this life, friends in Christ, that no matter how you try to rationalize, to think about it, that you will still remain a mystery to you. You won't understand it. And one of the philosophers says that we, even a man, is a mystery even unto his own self. Because there are things that you do sometimes, and you don't understand. You ask yourself, why did I have to do such a thing? And if it can happen to us human beings, how much more, God, that is so big, and so it's one of the mysteries that we have today. And no philosophical debates or scientific research that can fully explain what we are celebrating today. Humbly speaking, I've done a little bit of studies. I did a degree in philosophy, a degree in theology, and even master in theology. And I was thinking that perhaps when I finish all these studies, I will be able to at least to give a succinct explanation of what Trinity is. And if it's today, if you come to the church thinking that, oh, Father is going to tell you what Trinity is all about and explain all those things, sorry, I'm going to disappoint you today big time because it is a mystery. But of course, friends in Christ, instead of us today trying to rationalize how can we have one God but three persons? We should rather think about how did they live. And before we go into it, let me just tell you that maybe you'll be, it will be disappointing for you to know that we don't have the word Trinity in the Bible. And before you are too disappointed, also know that the word Bible is not in the Bible itself. But we have the events of Trinity in the Bible. For example, if you check in the very book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27, after God created everything in the universe, let there be light, and there was light. And when it was time for him to create man, he said, let us create man in our own image. Have you ever thought about it? Ask yourself, who was he talking to? I thought it was the only thing that exists. Let us create man in his own image. means that God the Son was there, God the Holy Spirit was there, God the Father called them, come let us make man in our own image. What's a good news to know that each and every one of us are created in the image of Trinity. And also if you check in the Gospel of John, the first one, he said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. Means that Trinity has always been in existence. And we check also during the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, they said when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, a voice came, they said something, a dove descended on the head of Jesus. The Holy Spirit descended on the head of Jesus, and a voice came from above. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And this was the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, in work. So friends in Christ today, Instead of us trying to rationalize how the Holy Trinity, the third person in one God works, we see how did they live their life. One thing that stands out, or two things that stand out for each and every one of us today, or in the readings of today, is that they love, they live in love. It was love that binds them together. And it is we came about as expression of their love. Out of too much love they have for each other, we busted out. They couldn't let's create man in our own image. And remember too that when you were baptized, all of us became Christian through baptism. And during your baptism, 
You were not baptized in the name of any other person. As Jesus told his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in what? The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. By so, even after being created in the image of the Trinity, you are also called through your baptism to live the life of Trinity, to live the mystery of Trinity, to live in the love and unity that binds the Trinity together. And so today, we are going to reflect about unity. If truly that we were baptized into the unity of the Trinity, what is happening with us today? What is happening in our church today? And everything that we do, wherever we find ourselves, even this gathering here, supposed to be expression of that Trinitarian God, love, and unity. And I'm sure COVID has spoiled a lot of things for us. Before, when I began my ministry, newly, when I start Mass, I used to give people time, talk to each other, get to know, because individualism has even has entered the church to the point that when we walk into the church like we just sit down, it's like we only have business with God. We don't have business with one another. We don't even know the person that is sitting beside us. We don't care about how they feel. We don't know what is happening in their own lives. It's not supposed to be so. Because we call to live the life of unity. And we cannot know the story of another person from a distance. We can't know the story of the person sitting down beside you from the distance. We got to know we come closer to them, to know, to ask, how are you? And when I ask how are you, I mean, how are you? How is family? How is business? How is children? What can I do to help? And that is the life we are called to live. Aside the church as well, friends in Christ, we go back to our own family. This unity has destroyed our own families. Respectfully speaking, friends in Christ, I know these days when a boy gets a beautiful girl, walks out of the family, or gets a beautiful boy, walks out of the family, and they never take their parents any longer. And this is a story. I'm telling you this from my own experience. The little years I've been a priest, I've seen a lot, and I feel for people so much, especially elderly people, that you will live in the same state, the same country, you have not seen your parents for five years, for ten years. And respectfully speaking, sometimes we allow the nursing home to be like a dumping ground for our own parents. And I know that a lot of people have been trying hard to go visit their parents there most often as they can. Please keep on doing. God will bless you for doing so. But friends in Christ, if you have not been doing, today is the Trinity Sunday. It's the Unity Sunday. A Sunday we are called to think about where is my level of unity with my own family? Where are my siblings? Have I checked on them? Have I called on them? Call them and check how they are doing. What can I do to help? We can't know the vulnerability of the other people, the need of other people from a distance. We got to be together. We got to know. Your talent should not be a threat to me. A talent of my sister or brother or people in this community should not be a threat to me. This choir, they are very important as much as I'm important. Bishop is important as much as I'm important. Without you, I would not be standing here today as a priest. And without me, there will be no bishop. Without bishop, there will be no you or... So each and every one of us is important, and this is the life the Trinity lives. This is the life the Trinity lives. And we are, we are baptized into that same life. So today, if nothing challenges us, let the unity that exists through the Trinity and within the Trinity challenge us. If you know it was because of hunger problem that you have with your sibling, problem that you have with your church member, has separated to you, that is not the life God wants you to live. Today you are challenged to go back and reconcile. Unity, let that love bind you together. Else we will be wasting our own time. 
And today I know if someone asks you, what is the photo ID of being a Christian? You might think, okay, maybe believing in God. I know there are people who believe in the existence of a greater being, I mean, I mean the highest being, but they are not in church. Or you say, okay, the photo ID for us Christian is that we pray, but I will tell you that Muslim prays even more than us. Or you think that our photo ID is just that, okay, to be nice with one another, I've seen people who have not gone to church, have never even heard about Christ, but they are one of the nicest people that you can ever meet in your life. They are generous. They are caring. So what is your own photo ID as Christians? Do you remember? It's what we are celebrating today. The Holy Trinity. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is your own photo ID. We are baptized into that. And you are called to live that life. Called to live the life of unity. And remember Jesus also in the Gospel of John prayed, he said, Father, may they be one as we are one. All what Jesus is yearning for, he's looking and he's wanting from each and every one of us is that we should be together. We should be one just as him and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. So friends in Christ, as we get around the table of the Lord today, we pray and ask God for the gift of unity in our own homes, beginning from the, our own parents, especially young people. When you move out of home because of marriage or one thing, please remember those who carry you in their stomach, I mean in their womb, for nine months, cared for you, take care of you, took care of you until the very time you stand on your own. Check on them, call on them, visit them, because you do not know the pains they are going through. We don't know what people go through behind the scene to cope with life. You don't know the fight they have fought. Some have fought with their fears, their doubt, their insecurity, their anxiety. Some have to fight with the haters, liars, backbiters, and betrayers. And some even have to fight with families. And some of us, sometimes we go to bed, we cannot have a sleep because we have to fight with our own self. And we don't see that. All what we see is a smiling face, how are you? They have the clinches kind of, how are you? We smile. But when to get to know other people, we need to be together. We need to ask questions. So we pray God to make us people of unity as we celebrate this feast today. And we say all together, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.